Hello boys and girls, ladies and gents, welcome to Alex Reed Talks with none other than Alex Reed. Oh yeah. So today I'm going to be investigating health and longevity. I've uh, I've trained my whole life. I know how to look good. I've um, been an athlete. I've, I know what to eat, how to train, what supplements to take. I've even taken performance enhancing drugs. But what cost has this had on my body? And you often see pictures of like really big, powerful bodybuilders and they might think they look buff. I don't actually think they look that great these days. What I actually look for now is the internal health. Yeah, you might have a, a good chassis, but how's the engine? Are you going to live a long, healthy life? And I'm just about to be a dad again. So that I can't wait for. And with that, I want to live as long and healthy as I possibly can, being active and strong. So let's have a look at all the different things we can do to make ourselves healthy and to be vibrant. Me and Nicola, my lovely fiance, we have had a lot of challenges conceiving a baby. We've been trying, well, seven years. Um, and we've had several miscarriages. But one of the things which I had to discover being like Sherlock Holmes was what's going on. Because half of the problem, half of the challenge was me and half the challenge was Nicola. And we had my semen tested. And my semen were, and I already have a child, so I thought, look, I'm, I, I'm all right. But actually, when we had my semen tested, I had 20,000. That's practically infertile because you should have 20 million to just be normal to be able to conceive. I thought, hmm, what am I going to do about this? I studied. I, I researched what I should and shouldn't be doing. I mean, I'd done some bad life choices. I wasn't taking hardcore drugs or I was taking certain supplements like ginkgo biloba, which is a Chinese medicine for your mind. And I, I discovered that that was really good for my mind, but terrible for my... I was taking saunas, hot baths, and I avoided those. I, I was drinking a lot of coffee. Yeah, caffeine's great for this, but again, terrible for this. And I, with, the, with prayer, with qigong breathing, with proper Vedic medicine, and a lot of research of what I should and shouldn't be eating and taking, I managed to increase my semen from 20,000 to 77 million in three months. And it's basically your life force for, you, for men. So I made sure, I mean, I, I think I said earlier on, 80% good, 20% bad. But in that period, I was 100% good on everything. And I felt generally stronger in every single way. Now, I don't expect you to live a Spartan lifestyle. I mean, I certainly don't. But there is, there's a time in your life when you want to increase things, you want to feel better. And like I said, you might have, if you've got diabetes, if you know how, you can recover from that drug free. So I've taken all sorts of pills, potions, snake oils. I've taken drugs, performance enhancing drugs to get myself fit and healthy. And what I've learned being a big study of Qi Kung, which is like Tai Chi um, and my martial arts, the ancient philosophies, uh, thousands of years old, they're almost more advanced than we are today. Um, I'm finding so many health benefits from taking Vedic medicine. And these guys saw they're extremely advanced. I'm not going to go into that now, but there's Long story short, there's all these supplements that you can buy in the health food shops and in bodybuilding shops. And you see the, the ingredients which I find are effective. Some of them are thousands of years old. So I got, that's something I know a lot about. And I want to share with you certain things which I've helped help me recover from being a gym junkie to being a health junkie. Now, you'd think the two are the same, but they're not. And um, before, I just wanted to be the best. At one point, I wanted to be the UFC champion of the world. And it didn't matter what, at what cost. But now, it's about, oh, I like to act. I want to be healthy. I want to be a good father for my child. I run my boot camps. And I'm not going to be a very good 
example if I'm hobbling around. So what can we take? What vitamins, supplements, what Vedic medicines, what herbs? There's lots that you can take. No exercise, exercise and supplements. I'm not gonna go into that too much here because that is my forte and we've got a lot more YouTube videos which you're gonna like, subscribe and join and watch. So we'll be adding those later. But what I'm gonna say is, and I know my missus is gonna argue, me, argue with me about this. I think as you get older, it's more important to exercise because although it's important to exercise throughout your whole life, when you're young, I mentioned something called homeostasis. As long as you're reasonably healthy, you might not train for quite a while, but your body will still say, stay fit as long as you do train at some point. Now, as you get older, your homeostasis starts to diminish. Your ability to recover and return back to what was normal gets less and less. We need to exercise for our whole life. But what I'm saying is it's equal, it's, I would say for me, more important to exercise when you're older. There's, there's goals I have when I'm 60, which don't sound very big, but there's, there, and for a 20 year old, for a 30 year old, for a 45 year old, uh, no problem. I wanna be able to walk when I'm 60, three miles uh, in an hour. It's not a lot, but when you're 60, I want to be able to get up off my hand, off my back, on the floor without using my hands. That's very important. That's agility, that's flexibility, and that's core strength. I want to be able to lift 30 pounds above my head. That's like a, that's a, the, the, the weight of a child. I want to be able to do 10 push-ups and five chin-ups. Doesn't sound like a lot. So for me to do that when I'm 60, I'm 45 now, I need to actually increase my gain now. So obviously as we get older, um, we, we, our bodies start to deteriorate a little bit. So the, bit, the higher we are now, the less they're gonna deteriorate when we get older. The biggest drug on the planet with the most addiction bar of anything, and I am an addict, sugar. And sugar, a little bit's okay, but it is very, very addictive and very dangerous. This is why the food industry adds sugar to every single product they put out there because it in instantly releases serotonin and dopamine and you feel good and you want more of that. But what else is that doing to us? It's aging us. Um, let's try and cut the sugar out. And diabetes is absolutely rampant in society. And diabetes is actually reversible in this. I'm sorry, can you hear my cat? She's, uh, she's having a little snore. And her mitzi. too. <laughs> yes, diabetes is so prevalent in today's society because we're not educated on how to eat, on what to eat. Listen. Let me explain it in an idiot fashion really quickly. If you're using your body, burning uh, lots of calories because you're working out or you've got a very physical job, you can get away with eating more sugary glycogen, glycogenic foods. You, you, when you eat carbs, you produce glucose. And as long as you're burning those off, you're okay. But if you keep adding more and more carbs and you're not burning them off, your body gets kind of like an old car, an old banger. When you really rag it to hell, it's gonna stop working properly. Hence diabetes, hence a whole cascade of problems, but it is reversible. There's many methods you can do to actually reverse it without drugs. It's just a little bit of knowledge. Now let's talk about protein. Um, I always wanted to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, yeah! And I wouldn't go to bed without having a protein drink. You know, my muscles are gonna starve if I don't have any protein. Well, guess what? We've done a pretty good job as a as the human race surviving without eating for days and days. Caveman, and in fact, not even caveman, some Aborigine tribes, uh, some Native American Indians, 
they might not eat for up to nine days. Some Africans who are going on a hunt. So, and they have to have athletic, muscular bodies to be able to, to catch the prey or cut, hunt the food when they, you know, after days and days without eating anything. So what's going on there? So I'm sure if they can do it, it doesn't mean we need to have a protein shake just before we go to bed. And in actuality, what I've discovered is that I actually sleep better and recover better if I eat uh, my last meal three hours before I go to bed because there's less thermogenesis going on in my gut. Thermogenesis might sound like a good thing because you're burning, you're burning. It's great, I want to burn the fat. But when you want to recover, that's not a great thing. When you eat a big meal or eat any meal for that matter, your gut, when you're sleeping, all the energy is going to be going here, working on it, rather than repairing all the other stuff going on, all of the nutrients which need to be fed to your muscles, to your brain. It's working here. So you're not going to sleep as well. And sleep is one of the most important things to live a long, healthy life. The only thing that we can all be certain of in this reality and existence called existence is we're not getting out very alive. And in this, what I like to call avatar of Alexander Reed, I want to live as long, healthy life as possible, but I don't want to be dependent on healthcare system, on having to take lots of drugs from doctors. I want to be vibrant and healthy and something I, I know a lot about, although there's things I still want to learn more, is food is the ultimate medicine. What we put in our bodies, what we, we, we become. So what should we eat for a long, healthy life and to be vibrant? 